Hi everyone, thanks for joining this session. So today we'll talk together about high performance multi-region messaging with NATS. So before to do that, let's talk about who we are. So I'm Cyril Becker, I'm head of infrastructure at XBTO. Uh, we are a lead and manage the infrastructure team since 2022. I started as a Linux HPC sysadmin. I have more than 15 years experience in open source infrastructure and services. Uh, I just discovered Kubernetes and AWS in 2017, and I designed previously many highly scalable platforms in the public cloud for the tech and the mobile game industry. And I'm uh, Vincent Bernot. I'm uh, DevSecOps at XBTO for more than three years now. Uh, I'm mainly focusing on dev and trading teams, and I have five years experience in sysadmin and cloud native applications. So XBTO. Who we are and what are we doing? So uh, we are a crypto trading uh, firm. Uh, we were uh, built in 2015 um, as a proprietary crypto trading investment firm. But today we are a full service company offering different services around crypto and investments. In 2023, we acquired a custodian trading platform that is called Stablehouse. And then uh, now Stablehouse uh, secure some. Oh, sorry for that. Secure some big deal with the fifth largest firm that is called Apex. Uh, I think there's a word thing with the TV. Sorry for that. Decode right. okay. Should be good. Sorry. Um, so may, maybe some of you already know us because we signed uh, Lionel Messi at the food, Miami Football Club last year. And we are also the main corporate and jersey sponsor of Miami, a football club co-owned by David Beckham and George Mass. Uh, we are licensed by the Bermuda Monetary Authority and have a present in five locations. So Bermuda, Miami, New York, London, Paris, and Abu Dhabi next. So what about the agenda? First, we'll present our needs uh, and why we uh, choose NATS. Then we'll present quickly NATS for those of you who don't know the, um, the technology. Then we'll deep dive into the platform and the architecture and the change we faced. And at the end, we'll present a quick tool that we developed uh, ourselves. And we'll answer all of your questions at the end. So let's talk about our needs and our use case. So what we want to do at XBTO is to share collected data between processes located in different regions around the world. So what we want is to have a full mesh technology that can connect several local message bus together to serve messages. We want also something that have clustering technology to have redundancy and availability, something stateless that do not require to write into disk and that store all the data in memory, something secure with modern authentication, authorization, and multi-tenancy, and also something really scalable, okay, that allow to ingest a big quantity of message that will increase over time without changing our current architecture. So let's talk about NATS. So how many of you are already familiar with NATS? Okay, nice. <laughs> and now how many of you are using NATS in production in your current company. Great. So, a quick intro on NATS for those that are not familiar with this tech. So, what's NATS? NATS is a simple, secure, and high-performance open-source messaging system built for the cloud and microservice uh, architecture. It is available since 2011. It's used by top major companies all around the world. It's written in Go, so it's cross-platform. There are multiple client libraries available for most languages, and its core design principle uh, is performance or performance and scalability. And it's developed mainly by Synidea that provide multiple uh, different types of services around NATS and also some support. So why it's cool and why it's great? There are multiple uh, advanced features included in NATS, but we will focus on four great advanced features. The first two features are linked together. The first great feature is the super cluster. So what's a super cluster? 
a super cluster is the set of uh, is the set of clusters sorry that have gateway connection established between them this means that for example if a client uh, connected to cluster a want to subscribe to a messages uh, that is hosted in a cluster b this will be possible seamlessly message will transparently flow across all clusters without the client needing to have any knowledge of the physical location so let's say for example you have three different local uh, message bus uh, split in three different regions, you will be able to connect a super cluster with all these clusters connected together. For doing that, the super cluster are using the gateway. So what's a gateway? A gateway enables connecting one or more cluster together into a full mesh network. So this allows the formation of super clusters. Gateway exists to reduce the number of connections required between servers and optimize the interest graph propagation. Another great feature that is included in NATS is the leaf node. So the leaf node extends any existing system of any size and optionally, sorry, bridging both operator and security domain. A leaf node will transparently route messages from local clients to one or more or remote NATS system and vice versa. And the last one is the monitoring. So what's great with NATS is that you have a built-in HTTP server that can provide some JSON endpoints. So this is really cool if you want to scrap some metrics with Prometheus or something else. Now let's talk about our architecture and platform at XBTO. A few metrics uh, from about NATS at XBTO. So currently we have 100, uh, more than 100 nodes, uh, 34 clusters, five super clusters, four leaf nodes, more than 5,000 uh, clients. We reach around 80 billion messages per month. So this means that we have approximately around 60 terabytes of traffic each month. And about the stack, so we use mostly NATS to dot 9, 2.10, Kubernetes and chart to deploy on Kubernetes, but we use also some standalone Linux binary, we'll talk about that later. And most of our clients are Python, uh, are written in Python, .NET, and uh, JavaScript. We use also Protobuf, it's really cool. Uh, we have built some custom Prometheus exporter, so we uh, create new features and extend the current NATS Prometheus exporter available on GitHub. And our monitoring stack is running on Mimir, Grafana, and the on-call services uh, hosted at Grafana Labs. And we will also show you at the end of this talk a homemade tools that we created that is called SnapMap to allow us to have our custom monitoring interface. So here you can see our current architecture at XBTO. So we have three main regions. Uh, one in the US, one in Japan, and one in the UK. We are using an hybrid infrastructure, so we have some private cloud and we use also AWS. Um, so between the US and the Japan, we use a direct connect link, so it's a dedicated uh, fiber uh, link between uh, AWS and our own data centers. This is really great for our st having stability. Um, and between the US and the UK and Japan and the UK, we just use a gold old VPN on the internet that is doing the tricks. Um, on each region, so all our processes are running into multiple Kubernetes clusters. So we use EKS on AWS, but also on-prem RKE, on shared distribution. I think soon we will migrate to Talos. <laughs> this is in the roadmap. But for the moment, we still use RKE. And on each region, we have this NATS bus that is local uh, in the US, in Japan, and in the UK. Uh, this is a great setup. Um, and the great thing is that with the direct connect with AWS, this allows us to route any traffic uh, from the United States to Japan with uh, what they call the direct connect gateway. So we can reach uh, all the region that we want with the same link in AWS. So now let's deep dive into the supercluster and how we built it. So first, uh, the goal that we had is to interconnect the different regions. We started with only one region, and then we had to expand to new regions. And we are keep expanding and adding more regions uh, uh, during the coming month. So the big thing is uh, it allows us to have a full mesh network. So you have a full mesh network in your regional cluster. So as you can see on the, on the schema here, on region A, we have a full mesh um, cluster with NATS, sorry. 
And we have a second cluster in region B, which is also full meshed, but every node in cluster A is connected to one node in cluster B. It's not completely full meshed, I, I would say. Uh, and it works with inbound and outbound gateways, so you can have inbound, so it receives connections and outbound. This is a really important feature for uh, another thing, which is scalability and decentralized architecture, because um, it allows to quickly add new clusters as you expand your regions. Uh, and also minimize a round trip delay because we are a trading companies, so latency is key for us, and we need to have the best routes and optimize the routes um, as we go. So, um, two important features that we use is the interest based routing. So, for example, in your Kima, you have the market data process A, which is publishing on the subject and it's consumed by the trading process A. And it's, if it's local, you keep it local. So, it will never be propagated to region B. It reduces costs uh, and also the number of messages. So that's great. But if you need to exchange messages from process C to the trading process C, which is on another region, it will be completely transparent. You won't have to even know on which cluster your process is um, deployed. It will be fully transparent. And at the end, uh, the gossiping. So the gossiping is a really interesting feature in Nats where you can dynamically update your cluster without any interaction. Meaning, if we want to add a region C in this setup, we would just have to put in the config of the new cluster at least one node of cluster A of cluster B, and you will have a full setup which will connect to every cluster and nothing to change in cluster B or cluster A. So that's really great for us. Now, let's talk about one of our superclusters. So, we have five of them, like this, and uh, we have also other smaller clusters, but this is the main one. So, we use EC2s to run on AWS. We'll dive into this later. Uh, we have a bunch of processes on Kubernetes, so EKS on AWS, and on-prem, we have also processes on Kubernetes. We have some time series database that are also connected to NATs. Uh, using other clients. We have standalone processes. So we have really a lot of processes with different stack, different clients that are connected to the same infrastructure and communicate easily between the regions um, to build really a decentralized architecture. So if we lose, I don't know, region B, it will still be functional. So let's talk about the monitoring now. So how do we monitor everything? Um, so one thing that is really important for us is if we are, have an issue on one of these core regions, to be able to see what happened and continue to monitor the other one. So we decided to set up our monitoring platform outside the current production infrastructure. So for doing that, we use a, a Mimir, self-hosted. Uh, we deploy that into two different providers, so it, in two different countries, so in America, in uh, Canada, in North America, and in Europe, in Germany. Uh, we just use some single instances, uh, some, so really high CPUs and memory uh, with fast local SSD storage. Uh, we use also Keyfree for doing that because we wanted to stay in the Kubernetes ecosystem because it's easier for us to deploy Mimir, to maintain the life cycle, uh, these type of things. Um, and on each node, we have um, a local MIIO object storage. So we have great I.O. to write on, uh, on, uh, on, uh, on the object storage locally, the data from Mimir. Uh, on this platform, so it's not just for NATs, we reach uh, 5 million active metrics. So this means that we ingest around 90,000 uh, metrics uh, on the, ingest, on the in ingress controller uh, that reach the Mimir API. And also we decided to use Mimir because maybe some of you know that this is maintained by Grafana Lab. It was uh, called Cortex a few years ago. They rebuilt that. So if Grafana Lab is using that for their customer, I think it can scale really uh, well for our use case. Um, now, how do we collect the data from each NATS bus? So as I said previously, if you remember, we have this a JSON endpoint uh, with the NATS metrics that is available inside NATS. So for doing that, 
We use our uh, custom Prometheus exporter uh, with advanced feature that scrap the data on the JSON page to get the metrics. And then we just use Grafana agent so, uh, to scrap the data from the Prometheus exporter and push it back to Mimir, to the Mimir API with the Prometheus uh, remote write features. Um, why we use Grafana agent and not just uh, a big Prometheus server that scrap the data from the Prometheus exporter is because Grafana agent is a small Prometheus, uh, so it's really light. It's uh, for us, our use case, it's better. So we have this agent on each node. It doesn't require to have the big Prometheus server uh, where we need you need redundancy to have at least uh, two replica if you have a failure, this type of things. So this is really great. Um, and for visualization and alerting, uh, so we don't want to care about maintaining our own Grafana. Okay, the guys at Grafana Labs are doing a great job. They uh, create advanced features that are only available on the Grafana Lab platform. So we use Grafana hosted as a SaaS version at Grafana Lab uh, to visualize and create some alerts. And also we use uh, a great service that is called OnCall. So for MNGRC alert and critical alerts that can send some SMS or you can have also a bot that call you if there is an emergency on the system. And the last great feature that the guys from Grafana Lab are providing is the synthetic monitoring. Um, so basically, it's like the Prometheus black box, okay? That is officially available on GitHub. The only difference is this: with this uh, version from Grafana Lab, you can create all the configuration on the portal, okay, on the web UI. So let's say that I, wa I want to check uh, uh, something. So synthetic monitoring is doing is mostly uh, using. Uh, used, sorry, for doing some uh, uh, prop checking. So I just have to go to the Grafana portal, say, okay, uh, I want to pick this prop. So you can set up your own prop, or you can use also some prop provided by Grafana. So this is really great all around the world. You just have to say, okay, I pick this prop. I want to check the latency with this service. Uh, if it's an ICMP protocol or a TCP protocol or also an advanced uh, HTTP protocol where you need, so for example, if it's an API a token, you can set up that on the platform and you just have to click on uh, setup and it's done, okay? And you have automatically the graph that show you what happened, the latencies uh, or the HTTP status code if you have something in HTTP. So now uh, a slide that some of you may not like, uh, why we migrated out of Kubernetes. So, um, First, we still have Nats running on Kubernetes for some use case, but we decided to migrate out for the big super clusters and the trading intensive cluster. Why? Uh, first, dedicated resource, because for networking, um, Nats and latency, you need dedicated resources. You want to really have a high throughput and also don't have any CPU uh, issues when you have shared instances uh, and some processes may go wrong. So dedicated instances are better for that, but it's more expensive, obviously. And also maintenance is harder uh, because you have to maintain everything by yourself. And it's not the same stack, it's not standardized. Uh, another thing is the dependency on Kubernetes updates. So we are using EKS, which has a life cycle uh, and a release cycle. And for us, uh, we have some issues with even the connections. So we need to have the NATS bus running for months, years. We have without any disconnections uh, also. So when EKS forced us to update, it creates downtimes and we obviously don't want to do that for some kinds of clusters. So that's why also we migrated out. But it's also a hard life cycle management because you have to do everything by yourself. And the end, and f for tuning, uh, it's also simple and networking because uh, you don't have the Kubernetes overhead, which is small, I admit, but it's still there. Um, it's easier to identify NAT traffic uh, because you have dedicated instances so you can directly know what traffic is going out and in. And one thing that was really difficult for us at some point was the load balancer. Uh, we use ingresses and load balancer in Kubernetes to expose NATs, but we have, there is really intelligent features in NATs uh, to optimize routing also uh, when you have a disconnection, try to find another node which is still up 
And the load balancer was adding more complexity to that. So we decided to get rid of the load balancer and it works really well uh, by itself. Uh, and last, last point, which is also more difficult, is the configuration management, because we had to create custom tooling, uh, Ansible, Terraform, and all that stuff, to ensure that you have the same configuration all time in all of your nodes, and secret rotations are, are also a bit um, harder. Next, uh, the challenge we faced. So it's more about tuning and optimizations. We've been running nodes for three or four years now. Um, we started small, we built on it, uh, there was updates, there are many features that are coming and updating. Um, first one I just spoke about, but it's the reliable networking. We kind of a downtime, even the connection is considered downtime uh, for us. So we wanted to have something that can run for years without having to touch it. Uh, so that's why we migrated to the new infrastructure, which is totally standalone on VMs on premise and on EC2s uh, on AWS. Uh, and we only rely on NATs for uh, routing optimizations and, um, and everything related to network. Uh, basically, it's running on Docker and we have host networking. So we really try to have the simpler networking possible. Um, second point was scalability. We started with only one cluster, then we expanded to a new region. We are expanding uh, to a third region, and now we will expand to a fourth region soon. So we really want to have something scalable where you can dynamically grow without a downtime. Uh, for that, some of you may know, you cannot out-reload the routes and the gateway configurations. So you have to reload the nodes uh, binary when you want to update th those configs. Um, so it's kind of disruptive for us. What we did, we extensively used the gossiping system where you can dynamically grow your cluster, as I said before, um, where you just put an endpoint of the running nodes and it will connect uh, all together and we use the mandatory downtime that we create to update NATs and to, uh, to yeah, basically do hardware maintenance uh, to also put the new cluster inside the configurations. So we do two things at once. Um, third thing was authentified, uh, unified sorry, authentication and authorization. We started with nothing. Then we added basic uh, authent um, authorization, sorry. And at some point when we used the super cluster, we also had to a unified authentication between all the nets. And that was something really difficult to handle because um, when you handle authentication at the cluster level, regional cluster level, it's fine. You can enable it quite easily and it will work even if remote cluster doesn't have authentication. Only if you use the default account, but that was the case. We use the default account, so the dollar G, um, but when you run in super clusters and you want to enable new accounts, for example, in our case, we wanted to use the system accounts and kind of separate all those things logically because we have multiple clusters physically separated on EC2s, but we also want to use the powerful um, logical separation in NATs. And to enable that, we had to create a downtime because you cannot enable authorization at the super cluster level without bringing everything down and bringing everything back up. So um, there might be ways to do that, uh, but it was really uh, difficult for us and we decided it was better for, for us to just bring everything down and bring it back up. Um, so another feature also for on authentication is the node user. I don't know if some of you have used it, but it's really great because we have some mixed, we have a mix of Authenticated client, uh, authenticated clients, due to legacy software and legacy uh, stuff that we have, and uh, the node user allows you to give a default set of permissions that will be used in case of uh, a client that will just not provide authentication. So it really enables smooth transition from non-authenticated non to authenticated uh, clients. Um, and at the end, so the global overview. Uh, we have more than 100 nodes. We are keep expanding this. So having the metrics is great, but we also wanted to have a better way of visualizing 
the whole uh, infrastructure because it's really critical for us. It's the core of our uh, business. If Nats is even down for a few seconds, we can lose a lot of money. Um, so we need to know at all time what happens and we need to know at all time that Nats, if it's failing, we need to know before the business, basically. Um, and quickly identify bottlenecks uh, on the infrastructure because as we rely only on Nats to decide by itself to load balance uh, traffic and everything, we need to know if at some point a, no a node is overcrowded or has too many traffic on it. And for that, we build custom tools. So we forked the, the Prometheus exporter, uh, so the, the official one, uh, to add more metrics and compute everything. And we created a new web dashboard, a uh, simple dashboard, uh, to have a better uh, observability on, uh, on that. And I will present it quickly. Um, so it's not a dynamic because uh, I could not replicate the whole infrastructure without leaking some information. So it's only screenshots, I'm sorry. Um, but basically, it's small uh, web UI with a Python backend, some TypeScript and React for the front, and obviously it's run on Kubernetes because we can have that on this. It's not um, an issue. Um, we use extensively NATS monitoring endpoints, so the REST endpoints that are built in, but we want to switch to the system um, account and use basically NATS to monitor NATS. Um, it's used for the infra team and the developers, at Infra, basically, we use it to monitor the infra, and the developers are using it to know at all, at all point um, in their processes, where are they connected to, what are the subscriptions, and the number of messages also that are going through. Uh, you have all of this in metrics, but you can have a, I would say, visual, visual way uh, and a list, basically. Uh, it's easier for them. Uh, so yeah, that's it for, for the Nuts map. So we built a graph. So it's one of our clusters. So you can see all three dots are regional clusters that are connected to uh, the others. Um, oops. Okay, great. Uh, so yeah, this is not dynamic on, on the screen, but if you click on the node, basically you will have a list and uh, an overview of the other nodes that are connected. It's really, really great for us when we need to do some maintenance because we can know beforehand which nodes are connected to this one. And when we reboot, we can know dynamically on which node it will reconnect because it's not uh, something that uh, we, we can predict. Uh, so that's really great on this part uh, to really uh, identify this. Oh, ju just one thing. What you don't see here is that you can zoom out and zoom in oh, yeah. also to see, um, for example, share what happened between these three local bus. So it's really, really cool. Yeah, this is really a big overview, but you can have more details uh, on this. And basically, this one is just a list, but you have really many, many details on the details space that I cannot present today. Uh, but it's really useful for us to have a, an overview of all of the nodes, all of our buses, and everything running there. Um, so it's really, really simple, uh, but it does a job right now. So now let's see real uh, conclude. Yeah, so to conclude, um, we are really happy with this current architecture. It's really scalable. Um, we think that Nats fit well with our use case. So we, con we will continue to use that. Um, the guys from Synergy are currently including many great features in the next release, so feel free to check the last release notes. I think the new version is coming uh, in a few weeks. Um, and yes, yeah, so we will try to expand that and keep continuing working on this infrastructure um, and add, add more also density feature into our NATS map. Uh, it's not open source for the moment. Maybe one day we will uh, push it uh, on GitHub, I don't know. I'm not sure I want yeah. everyone to look at the code, but yeah. We'll see. Um, that's it. Uh, any question, maybe? Uh, hi, I'm just curious why you chose to go stateless and in memory and not on disk. Wouldn't that be safer? Um, first performance, and because you know uh, the persistencies in uh, NATs 
is available now with Jetstream. Before that, it was not really available. So when we decided to build this architecture, what we wanted to have is just full performance. And because we have three replica on each region, we don't really need persistency because if one is a failure is happening, we still have on you know, one uh, bus, for example, we still have the two other ones that are running. Okay, so it's why we decided to go stateless for performance and because the jet stream was not available uh, before. Yeah, and basically for the training processes, uh, it needs to go fast. Like we have reconciliation built in the trading uh, platform, but it needs to go fast. Even if the message is not delivered, it will be delivered again. But it needs to go fast, and we don't want to have writing to disk uh, for that. No, I think we will stay stateless. We will continue to stay uh, stateless. Um, it's much better for us uh, because it's a really specific tr um, trading use case, you know. Uh, on other services, on other uh, at XBTO, we use persistences. We start using Jetstream. Uh, we still have one old Kafka cluster for <laughs> another uh, project, but maybe we will replace Kafka with Jetstream uh, in the future for this project. Yeah, it's mainly for the trading part where we don't have Jetstream, but we use Nats and Jetstream for other specific use cases. Do you have some uh, latency metrics within your super cluster? Be between uh, between each uh, region that created the super cluster? Yes. So, yeah, so currently between uh, Europe and uh, Japan, we have around 200 milliseconds, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we, we, we currently we're working on a new project to increase that, to lower that. We will use a new uh, global provider network, a private one. So, we will uh, achieve uh, around 100 milliseconds between the Europe and Japan. And between uh, the US and uh, UK, I don't remember, it's around 80. Yeah, something like that. Yes. Yeah, something like that, 80. But, you know, um, between the US and Japan, what's great is that we have the direct connect link. So we use the internal backbone of AWS to route everything. What we want, why we, we did that, it's because when you're in the AWS backbone, it's really stable. So you can reach uh, all AWS region uh, with not the best latency available on the market, but it's really stable and we don't have any issue. Yeah, and that's from the infrastructure part, but where the processes are um, the most latency sensitive, usually they use the same region. We put everything in the same region and uh, so regional clusters are really latency sensitive, but super clusters, uh, basically we it's okay to have a bit less, a bit more latency, sorry. Uh, when we need really, really latency sensitive processes, it's uh, directly on the same host and uh, really optimized in another way. Hello. Uh, thanks for the talk, it was really great. Um, I, I got two questions. Um, do, do you do a performance test uh, on your NATS infrastructure? Um, and if you do, do you recommend any tools uh, that help you so? And uh, uh, I wanted to know as well, how do you handle, um, how did you handle back pressure problem um, on your um, NAS, uh, NATS infrastructure? Thank you. Uh, thank you for the question. Basically, we have two setups. So we presented the prod one, but we have a fully uh, similar setup uh, for testing environment. Uh, so it's exactly the same uh, VMs, EC2s, so it's expensive, it's less used, but we do uh, pressure tests on this one. Um, usually what we do is we have all the same stack running, obviously for testing, but uh, at some point we just generate more and more, more messages uh, to test beforehand uh, if the NAS infrastructure will, um, well, will handle the new load, I would say. And uh, when we do migrations, we test everything on UAT. We try all type of scenarios uh, to to really test if our clients are um, are really um, able to reconcile and everything. And that's also one feature that will will be really great normally in next fee, um, release is the lame duck. Uh, lame duck mode is a signal that is sent from NATS to your clients. Uh, to say, hey, I'm, I'm stopping in two minutes. So do what you have to do. 
but I'm stopping and you should know. That's something that we're really working on uh, to add this into our processes so we can directly reconnect to another node if we have an issue. And in a, uh, I would say later, um, we also would like to measure latency between the client and NATS. And if we see that it's too high, try to connect to another node directly to reduce the load. Yeah, and um, you have NATS box. Um, that's a great tool that allows you to also to do some benchmark um, it's provided in NATS. Um, so um, you can use that also to test your performance and see how many messages you can reach, everything. So, so that's really, really cool. Hi, a uh, couple questions about the, your Kubernetes setup. Um, you're using the RKI one probably, and do you manage that uh, by Rancher server? And uh, how big is the cluster? This is a bare metal node or, or VM? And uh, last question, why you decide to migrate to Talos? So um, as you know, Rancher was acquired by SUSE uh, since uh, more than one year, two years now. And uh, first, we were just using the Rancher manager to be able to give access to our developer with the project uh, features from Rancher. This is really great. It's basically a Kubernetes proxy that allows your user to connect to any cluster managed by the Rancher manager easily. Also, we were not using GitOps uh, two years ago. Okay? We were do, deploying our cluster uh, by hand, set up in the Helm chart, uh, for example, Prometheus ingress controller by hand, so it was a pain. And what we wanted uh, at that time is to move to the GitOps methodology. Uh, I love uh, Flux, for example. But Rancher was providing a tool that was called Fleet. And it's why also, when we explored the market, we, we told us, OK, we have this Rancher multi-cluster multi manager that is great. They integrate now uh, a component like Flux inside the Rancher manager. So we will use Fleet. It was a big nightmare, <laughs> to be honest, uh, because Fleet is not like Flux. Uh, the product was not really stable. They were updating major release, so it was breaking many things on the Kubernetes cluster managed by Rancher. So we decided to stop that. Now we want to reduce our footprint with Rancher. And to be honest, we discovered um, Talos now uh, last, last year's. Uh, I think it's a mature technology now. What's great is that, as you know, you don't, it's a light distribution, OK? You don't need any more an SSH on it. So this means that for security purposes, it's great. Uh, you don't have to take care about, uh, for example, uh, updating Ubuntu each uh, month uh, because you have some security fix. And also, you can deploy your cluster easily just with uh, the, with the um, Talos uh, command line in, uh, in one second. Uh, same for maintaining the life cycle, upgrading your cluster, adding more nodes. So to be honest, I think um, for the on-prem part, moving to Talos will be a great benefit for us. Uh, and it will be easier for us to manage our Kubernetes in the future with just the, the Talos uh, CLI. And just to add on that, uh, maybe also the life cycle. Uh, because on EKS, uh, you're always at the almost the last, latest version of Kubernetes. And on Rancher, it's a bit uh, more difficult to have the latest. Uh, so sometimes we have differences in a, a versions of Kubernetes for the same projects. So um, that's also one of the points uh, for, for moving f away from Rancher. But we are really happy also with the project. Um, it was working well and still working well. All right, no more question. So thanks a lot, everybody. You have a QR code on the last slide. So if you want to give us some feedback, it's really cool. Uh, feel free to do it. Thanks. Yeah.